Hi guys, it's Alex and today I'm going to talk to you about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child! Okay, this is gonna be like a really, like it's gonna be spoilery. I'm not, I'm not gonna do like some review for it. Like if you've read the book, watch this video. If you haven't read the book, click away. Don't watch this video because you, it's just full of spoilers. I'm just gonna talk about it a bit. I wouldn't personally say that it's an eighth Harry Potter book. I would more say that it's kind of... I don't, well it's just the plays obviously, but I would kind of say it's just it's like a nod to um, the people that grew up with it, it's just a kind of follow up uh, to see where the, some of the characters are at, not all of the characters, some of the characters, um, and I think in that respect, like if you don't treat it as it's like some big canon thing and this is like legit the 8th book, then you're fine. The first thing I want to talk about, it, obviously, is that it is a play. Um, so when I was like starting to get into it and like started to read it, it was a little bit weird. Just kind of reading it from a play perspective, like the, the stage cues and then, yeah, it was, it was a little bit weird getting into it. But then I, I started to really enjoy it. I really like the theatre, not that I go that much. Um, but I do like it and so a lot of the times I kind of was like switching between picturing it on stage which was really quite interesting and fun for me um, and then picturing it like I was kind of in the Harry Potter world. Okay, I like that um, Scorpius was sorted into Slytherin. I liked that it was like a time travel kind of thing because I think when it comes to a play that is probably one of the most um, effective. If you think of it as like um, a nod or like a tribute piece or something like something that kind of is just for the fans if you treat it that way then the time travel thing is like really smart it's a really smart move because you get to see some of the other characters that have already died the, the some things that <clears throat> I liked about the time travel thing was that they went back and saw Snape I thought that was really good I was not expecting it um, just the feels were just Snape. I love you. I don't know, I felt like it was a bit rushed, but I mean, I'm gonna say that a couple of th times that like things maybe feel a little bit rushed, but I, I understand why they're rushed. I mean, it's a play, it's not a novel where you can fully explore these things. The playwriters probably had um, more things that they wanted to do, and they just thought that this was the most effective way, and it's a play like you can't sit through an eight hour play, you just have to take it as a play. Um, and that's just what they, they chose to show you and talk about. So I really enjoyed that they went back and talked to Snape. Um, one thing that I wish they had done was <coughs> when they went back to the Trial Wizard Tournament, I wish that they had seen Fred and George, because all throughout this book, like, Ron has been kind of like the comic relief character. I think it would have been good if the first time that they went back and they actually ran into Hermione, if something would have happened with Fred and George, if um, they would have showed up together, maybe pulled like a prank on them, um, something like that, or they were handing out, um, you know, some of their lollies, something I think that they should have showed Fred and George, it would only have taken like a minute in the play and it just would have been really nice. I, I like that it was based around the time turners because I feel like um, whenever there's a Harry Potter discussion on YouTube or whatever, there are always people who are kind of like, yeah, but the time turners, like, can't you just like turn back time and just change everything? And everyone's like, no, 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 they were, they were taken out, blah, 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 you know, after the third movie. And that was one of the best parts of the third movie for me. And the third book was the time travel aspect of it. Because that's a whole nother realm of magic that they briefly explored in this world of magic. Like, it's just completely different to everything else that they've done in the Wizarding World, is the time travel. So I liked that they kind of, they visited the time turners again. And then you could go back and then there was a limit, you could only do five minutes. Uh, and the scene with Draco, it was really sad when his wife died. I, I just, I, th I really felt for Draco. That was really sad. And when he was holding the golden time turner and he's like, oh, I've been thinking about going back so many times just to see her. 
my heart broke a little bit because, you know, it's just such a, a horrible situation to be put in and anybody in that situation would would have wanted to go back. And it just kind of, it shows the strength of Draco's character. Show that he really understood because he's, he's portrayed as kind of like this selfish little boy in all the books and things like that. But it's just, yeah, he's really grown up. It was heartbreaking. The thing that I didn't understand that was like a loose end with the whole book was the guy, I don't even know his name, the, the underground guy or whatever who was making the time turners. What happened to him? Like he gave Draco a time turner, the other like a uh, trial time turner that Delphi destroyed. Um, he could just turn around and make another time turner and he can go into someone else's hands like I mean I kind of like it's it's a given that they'd have extra security and stuff like that from then on on time turners and like making sure that that kind of thing never happened again but what happened to that guy I feel like that was just a bit of a loose end that they could have wrapped up a little bit more in that kind of like epilogue part thing at the end I really enjoyed that Harry got to finally say all of the things that he wanted to say to Dumbledore. Um, I thought that was a really good moment um, and Dumbledore was crying and I thought that was really sad and he could finally get it off his chest. Uh, so I thought that was really sweet, it was a really sweet moment. Um, and when Scorpius, Albus and Delphi did the Polyjuice Potion, and they turned into Harry, Ron and Hermione. I thought that was really good. I was just smiling. Um, it's just a throwback to when they went into the ministry, um, dressing up as other people. I just thought it was a really great moment. It was a bit weird when, <coughs> was it Albus was Ron? When um, Albus like kissed Hermione a couple of times. That was a little bit weird. Uh, I really liked as well that no matter which which time frame they were in, Ron and Hermione still like really, they loved each other. They maybe just didn't realise it, but they did love each other. Yeah, it was a bit weird how much Hermione kind of changed um, in one of those time areas when she was Defence Against the Dark Art Teacher. I just, I thought it was really weird. It doesn't really, um, to me, speak for Hermione because I don't think Hermione would ever have been that kind of, what is the word? That kind of Snape-ish. That's all I can think about. I, I, I didn't think that she would ever be that kind of Snape-ish. I thought, you know, her Hermione-ishness. Um, would always shine through. She's always just a caring person. Um, and she kind of lost that, which it was, was interesting, but I don't think it was really um, true to who Hermione is as a person. Another thing that was really cool was that Harry uh, turned into Voldemort. Um, that was pretty cool. It was It was weird and it was cool at the same time because he turned into the person that he hated the person that like killed his parents. Um, so I think that that was really interesting to me. But the whole the whole Delphi thing was just a bit weird. It was a little bit weird to me. I mean, like other things, like the the trolley lady, how she she was like this psycho witch lady person. Um, I, I kind of enjoyed that. I mean, it was a bit weird that she's like at the top of the train and she's got like spikes for hands or whatever was happening. I didn't know what the hell happened there. But, you know, it was just interesting because it's a character that you don't really think about and then they kind of gave her that little bit of extra backstory that you never really would have thought about at all in the Harry Potter world. It's just not something that you, you think about at all. I know that I've never really thought about the backstory of the trolley lady other than, you know... She's just got awesome sweets. Delphi, I don't know. I mean, like, of course, Bellatrix, you weirdo. You would sleep with, with Voldemort. I mean, like, does Voldemort, can he even get it up anymore? Like, is he even, like, a person? What, like, I don't get it. Don't get it. I mean, 
It's a bit weird because they're like, oh, just before the Battle of Hogwarts, she had her baby. It's Bellatrix. Like, she loves Voldemort, obviously. I mean, enough to have sex with him. Uh, and I guess she never thought that it would fail. And of course, if you really love that person, just like, just like Ramus and Tonks, you know, they went into battle and they left Teddy and that was, that was sad. I mean, you, that, that's another thing. You don't even see Teddy in this book at all. It wasn't mentioned at all. Like maybe they could have run into him like once at Hogwarts and then going back to, to Godric's Hollow and then Harry um, had to experience his parents' death all over again. Was re yeah, it was really heartbreaking. I thought it was really sad. I kind of would have liked it if Harry um, had gotten there a little bit earlier and was able to see his parents kind of be caring towards him um, before they, you know, before everything happened and then they just got murdered. Something would have been, been nicer. Or maybe after that, like, one of them could have snuck into the house because, because, haha, because um, the blanket was basically destroyed uh, to send that message, <clears throat> which was interesting. But I mean, it's like, it's like such a stereotypical, I'll send a message back to the past because I'm in the future. Um, because the blanket was destroyed and it's the only thing that he had of his mother, maybe one of the the kids or something could have run into the house and taken something else for Harry to have and brought it back with them um, and then Harry could have had this extra thing I mean I know they don't want to change it but I mean taking taking one thing from the house I don't think would have changed anything I, I don't really feel like Cedric would have become a Death Eater at the end of the day I don't I, I think no matter what happened really I mean he was embarrassed and then he turned into a Death Eater I don't feel like that really would have happened because Cedric was such a nice person. Um, yeah, I, just, I don't picture him becoming a Death Eater at all, no matter what happened. I don't think he would ever side with Voldemort, ever. I mean, I don't know. He was always like a humble person. He was very popular, but he was a humble person. Like, he was just a really nice guy. And Harry kind of hated that he was a really nice guy because he wanted to hate him. Because he was going out with Cho Chang, but he couldn't because he was just a really nice guy. Really nice guys don't turn into fucking Death Eaters. Like, seriously. Well, I really, I really enjoyed this book. There was a lot of smiles, a lot of feels. Um, and I, I did like that it was a play. I mean, I, obviously I would have liked it better if it was a novel. But, I mean, you know, you get what you're given. You get what you get and you don't get upset, is what we say at Kindy. And... Um, yeah, it was just really nice. It was a really nice thing. And if, if you don't treat it as being canon and like the official eighth book, it was just a really nice journey to have. And it kind of was weird, but wonderful. Traveling back to the Harry Potter world in writing form, like not just like watching the videos again and not just like rereading the novels. Um, I haven't been to Harry Potter world. I went to like one exhibition, but yeah, having this new literature to read about the Harry Potter world. Um, it was really nice. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the book. I'd probably give it like four out of five. I would read it again, and I think what I would do is, if I ever read the Harry Potter series again, I would read the, f you know, all the books, and then I might read that book as well afterwards, because I did enjoy it. Funny story. So I was talking to my dad. I've got a little sister who's eight. She really loves Harry Potter. Um, but she's only read, like, the first book. But she's watched, like, the first three movies. And she's like, oh, the movie's after the third one. They're M, which is for 15-year-olds. So I can't watch it. And she has only read the first book. But she, she does love the world. I'll wait a couple of years and then she'll be really into it. Dad asked me a question about the book because I was talking to my brother about it. And he's like, oh, so the new book, you know, is it about Harry? Or like, does he have kids? It's about his kids, isn't it? And I was like, yeah. Oh, and I say to my sister, she's like looking at me. 
And I'm like, no, I've kind of like spoiled the end. And um, she's like, oh, they've got kids. Like, what happened? Oh my God, so Harry's alive? He like lives? And I'm like, no, what happened? What have I done? And then I was like, yeah, well, <coughs> at the end of the last book, there's like an epilogue, which is 19 years later, and it kind of just goes from there, and that's what it's based on. It's like basically at the start of the epilogue, that's the start of the, the plays. Yeah, and so then she pulls out the last book, and she's like, like goes to the end, and she's like, right, well, I'm just going to read the epilogue then. And I'm like, no, you can't do that. Seriously, Sage, you have to read all of the books. Um... Yeah, so I feel like really bad about spoiling it. I just wasn't thinking. I don't even know because I think it's because I wasn't thinking it was like completely canon. That that just slipped. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. And then I told my brother that I kind of spoiled it and he's like, <sighs> yeah, that's a bit of a spoiler. Anyway, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you next time. Let me know as well what you thought about the book. Have a lovely day and uh, yeah, goodbye.